First up is a new film on Netflix called The Mother, and it stars Jennifer Lopez. And when it comes to JLo's acting career, I am of two minds. I am self-admittedly, I like her early rom-coms. I, they are guilty pleasures of mine. I'm into it. Some of her more recent choices, some of them I'm very on board for. I really liked Hustlers. Some of them, not so much. You know, uh, I would say Marry Me was not particularly impressive. I really disliked Shotgun Wedding. And unfortunately, I had a very similar reaction to The Mother. I think part of what I'm bristling up against is this unnecessary level of violence in these films. Like, I don't need you to show me that you're hardcore by murdering a bunch of people. That's not something I need from any action movie, but I feel like a lot of times when there is a, quote, female-led one, they try and overcompensate. And it just doesn't sit well with me, especially in the sort of current climate we're in where there's a mass shooting every it's not to get too down on this but I don't react well to it and I found especially some of the scenarios in the mother to be quite frankly triggering in those senses the premise behind it is that JLo is a deadly female assassin and she comes out of you know hiding because she was involved in all these complicated things years ago and she secretly has a child and now she has to come out of hiding to protect this child and it just it makes it makes no sense you know I again She's trying her best, but it, I just, something about it does not read to me. Her range is very limited. You know, I, I think she does better in the rom-coms in those senses, or the hustlers, but the the ex-military pro, whatever, etc. I just, I wasn't buying it. It also has Joseph Fiennes and Gael Garcia Bernal, and what a waste of talent. <laughs> like, these are some, those are some pretty A-list actors, or, you know, like, capital A acting actors, and I just... First of all, minimal appearances for some of them. And second of all, I was just like, why are you in this? And I, I think the answer to the why, of, why are all of them in it is money. But sometimes money is not worth just the, the – well, maybe it is. Maybe the amount of money they got for these is. I I was surprised. Nikki Caro directed this. I am a fan of Nikki Caro. She is a New Zealand director. She did Whale Rider, which is, I think, a truly spectacular movie. She also did McFarland USA, which is kind of cheesy, but it's like a running movie and I'm into it. And then the live action Mulan, which we don't need to talk about. But yeah, skip this. I just, I don't have another way, you know, it's unnecessarily violent, even in terms of putting it on as a background watch. Like, yeah, there's just extended action sequences that don't make sense. They're not particularly compelling. The story is paper thin. It's just, it's, uh, there's not a lot going on for it. There's not a lot of substance to it. I am going to give it a two out of five, and that's probably being generous. The other film I have this week is called Blackberry, and I thankfully very much enjoyed this film. It's interesting to watch this within a couple weeks of the film Air coming out, and I feel like they are somewhat a yin yang. And what I like about Blackberry, it's the story of the BlackBerry phone and, you know, the the sort of rise to power and then the absolute botching up of this great service product, etc. that, you know, the, the world's first smartphone effectively and the rise and fall of that. I don't think I was super familiar with the details of it. I remember when Blackberries came out because I predate the internet and I, uh, I you know, I remember my mom had one and it was very professional and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, uh, government officials would all have them and the encryption, all this stuff. But anyway, the thing that I found particularly interesting about something like BlackBerry in comparison to something like Air in that even, and Air is the Nike story, even if you know how it ends generally, this one is one, it's it's the, it's the an underdog story, but also like nobody is particularly likable and they are making huge mistakes and you can relate to the mistakes and you can see where the characters are coming from, but they also, it's not like they're like, oh, warm, fuzzy, blah, blah, blah. No, they are monster businessmen sometimes who are making decisions at the expense of friendships and relationships and family and all this stuff. And you're like, yeah, I see how these things happen. This feels realistic versus the sort of fantasized story. And it's still fictionalized and fantasized, but, you know, the glossiness and the the sort of... Um, you can feel the corporate feelers on something like an air versus this where it's just like, no. And I'm sure there is some, you know, uh, softening of some of the stories, et cetera, in BlackBerry. But I just found it presented in a way that was frustrating, but in a compelling way. Whereas, you know, uh, I think something like air felt a little more uplifting and yeah, warm, fuzzy. But this, I was more on the edge of my seat and I felt like the character's actually had relationships with each other and you know potentially because they are not Michael Jordan level characters you don't have these preconceived notions about them so that's helpful in it but you know you're basically watching a pair of friends go on a rise and then a fall and then other people come in it has Jay Baruchel it has Glenn Howerton with the worst haircut I've seen in a movie in a long time but more power to him for trying to do this again 
all unlikable characters presented in a really interesting way. And I think it's very hard to tell a story like that and still have you feel satisfied at the end. But that is how I walked out of it. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed Black Riot. I don't think it's just for like marketing people or people who have followed technology history. It's, you know, it's a business story. It's a story of friendship. It's all these things. It does not, thankfully, it gets a little tech-y at points. But generally speaking, if you were alive and remember a BlackBerry or know what a BlackBerry is or any of those things, I think you will be really fascinated by the story. And I think it is worth sitting through some of the, you know, more realistic feeling moments. It also, there are times like visually, it, it felt a little mockumentary-ish, like, like the office sort of cinema verite style, which I didn't mind at all, actually. I thought it was going to maybe get a little gimmicky, but I think they use it in just the right ways. And and again, it's just watching truly human characters. So BlackBerry, I'm going to give a 4.2 out of 5. 